Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, lovely to not see you all, but you can see me. Uh, I hope you're all now nice and calm after Jessica's yoga session, uh, absolutely wonderful. We've got another jam-packed day today, really jam-packed day, so I hope you stick around, I hope you come in and out and, and use these sessions. Today we have the wonderful Jane Anderson uh, is with us talking all about casting, so uh, if you are a subscriber, and I will say this through the interview as well, please uh, feel free to use the comment, but well, Christopher's already there, he's already done it. Good afternoon and to you as well Christopher. Um, please uh, there's a live comment section and you can type your questions in. Please do that as we go rather than waiting to the end because there's a slight delay and we will try and get to them. Um, if you come in a little bit later so, or if you're watching this um, uh, not live um, I'm sure that we'll cover all those questions that you've ever wanted to to hear. So without further ado hopefully Jane is there. Yay how you doing? Hello. <laughs> Oh, how's it how's it going? Now you're in uh in Manchester. How is um, is it sunny? Uh it's overcast. Oh no. Oh no, tragic. Sun is coming, it's fine. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's been no, it's good. I'm ready. I'm ready for all the questions. All right, great. So as you heard, Jane is ready for the questions, so please. <laughs> Write those questions in. Hello, everyone. Lovely. Thank you so much for being here. So do ask those questions and we will get to them. We won't necessarily answer them straight away, um, but we will get to them. So why don't we start with Jane Anderson, casting director. Why? Why did you choose casting? Why? And, oh, and my God. How did you get into it? Why did I? I don't know. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, so basically what casting does for me is it uses my creative brain my organized brain and my math brain. Um, so no other job would work other than casting. So basically, I um, I did a mixed media degree. I, well, I'll start actually earlier than that. I grew up, so my brother's a now retired contemporary dancer, but he used to go to WAC, Weekend Arts College in North yeah. London. And um, so I was sort of always the observer. And so there's people like Danny Sapani, Che Walker, they were all there at the same time. Um, and I used to take photos of performances. So and ended up uh, doing a mixed media degree specialising in dance photography, um, but was also very good at organising things. So when I left uni, I realised there wasn't I wasn't able to make a living out of dance photography. There's just no money in it. Um, but because I was very good at bossing people around, um, I got a job in production. So I worked in production for three years. I was very good at it, but fundamentally. It, was, it wasn't creative for me. I was organising other people's creativity. So I went off travelling with my camera and a rucksack um, and disappeared for five years, lived overseas, um, had a little bit of dabbling in the industry, but just used my talents and other things. And then when I came back, I was like, well, I want to get back in the industry. What do I What do? I do? And then I bumped in, well, I, then I started to think about it and I thought, well, casting. And I often, in, I used to work in commercials. I, as the production manager, after did the casting. And it sort of made sense having grown up observing all these performers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, decided on casting, bumped into a producer I used to work with. He, he introduced me to Sarah Crow, who gave me loads of great advice. And then she her assistant at the time was going on holiday for two weeks so she said why don't you just come in for two weeks and get a sort of sense of what's going on um and whilst i was there previous to those two weeks i'd done this big send out of letters this is before email was the only word communication <laughs> um and just sort of saying look you know these are my i've worked in production these are my skills etc etc and then got a job as the second assistant with di carling who i call the mothership um Amazing. So basically I went with her for nine months and really got that real sort of grounding of training um, and then went my way up to being casting associate and then eventually going out on my own. And I think, you know, the key thing, and it was always that thing, you know, when I started, people were like, there is no money in it, so don't do it for the money. You've got to really love what you're doing. And I do, and I love that thing of nurturing talent. I often work with a lot of young performers and it's often that sort of, time of giving them their first screen job or their first job professional job you know full stop um and it's just lovely to see that when you give them a job and then see how their careers progress and things like that so yeah it's very re rewarding but not financially rewarding 
<laughs> Absolutely. And there's there's this thing with, with casting, it seems like um with casting directors, um, that it, it feels um sometimes thankless. Like you do all this stuff, don't you? And you find and 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 then it all goes to away and you just sort of sit there it, it, quietly and it's it very much has to be that kind of I don't think you can have much ego as a casting director, you just have to go. Yeah, and also it's not, it's that thing, because generally it is, well, for me anyway, it is about the performer. So, uh, yeah, and it is thankless, you know, because basically t t watching television is, is work. Going to the theatre is work. Going to the cinema is work. It's like you never really shut off. and But you do that in, to enable the fact to just see loads of people doing different things and then coming up with ideas when it's your, you know, when you've got a project on. And so without that, you wouldn't have shows. Um, and then what then happens is, because you're not on set, I think you're then forgotten about. So when it comes to people like being, you know, directors or producers being interviewed or at a work, or awards or whatever, what you'll often see them say, when I cast, and as opposed to saying, when the casting director, <laughs> you know? It's just, and it's, so it's nice when you see people that do, you know, basically, show their appreciation for casting directors um but i think it, i think it is changing i mean obviously finally being re recognized by bafta has is going to help yeah um and some jobs you know you you do feel like like a technician and other jobs you're really involved in the process and you have a real good you know sort of dialogue with the producer and director so it really does depend so when uh, you're casting, tell us a little bit about your casting background, projects that you've worked on. Um, uh, I mean, I know all this stuff, but tell us about you and and like stuff that you really love getting your teeth into. Like obviously you're talking about young performers. I know that you're really active um, with um, uh, 53, isn't it? That you do you do like 52? Yeah. So. Um, we do. I'm a I'm a board member of, so I don't actually. So I don't do theatre casting. I do screen. Yeah. Um, so t and I TV and film basically. Um, I've ended up doing a lot of kids shows. I love working with kids. Um, see, so, but obviously with kids shows the budgets are tiny, so it can be quite a struggle. Um, and then independent films. Um, so. Yeah, so, you know, I sort of, things like, so Creeped Out, I did the first series of Creeped Out, Hank Zipser. So people who are younger know those shows, or people who have kids of that age know those shows. Um, and then um, independent films, uh, Convenience, which is hilarious, which we got onto Netflix for ages. Um, it's not on Netflix anymore, sadly. Hardboard Switch was, was my first um, job, which I believe is, on Prime. I know it was on for a bit. Um, so it's like, I like comedy and I also like really sort of gritty dramas. So it's, if you have too much, like if I've had too many comedies, I'm really wanting to get a gritty drama. And then if you get too many dramas, you're really wanting to have comedy to have that sort of balance. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's it really, generally. Isn't it? Tell us about your room. A lot of people ask about the casting room and how it's run and things like that. And no doubt we'll get these questions, but I'll start people off. Is like, you know, um, these discussions we constantly have and it, it, we, we're always saying to actors, you know, we need you, we want you to be good. We, it's, we don't call you in to catch you out, you know, and it kind of, they sit there going, really? Um, yeah. And it's so true, right? And so, you know, that, that whole thing of wanting them to be right and sometimes, well, certainly we get nervous before a casting, hoping that we've done everything that we need to do and hoping the actor brings it in. Tell us a little bit about your casting process and like how that works and, and your well, room. I don't, so sort of similarly, because of that, you know, the mothership, Di Carling, it was always much, it was very much about the actor. So it's, you know, you always make sure that actors have at least, at, the, at least four days with a script. Generally, it's sort of like a week. Um, and so they've got enough prep time um, that when they come in the room, I like to still go and, as an assistant, I was often sent off to collect actors, which was great. But I actually have continued that because I like that little moment of chat, even if it is like, 10 seconds yeah. just to connect with them before you take them in the room and meet, you know, they meet the direction producer. Um, 
I mean, sometimes they're meeting Jesus, meeting me, you know, but uh, so is that, it's just that thing of trying to get, put them at ease before they walk in the room. In the room, I want it to be a nice environment, have nice chats. Um, you know, I want people to feel appreciated. And if they're nervous that you can try and calm them down and reassure them without making a big thing out of the fact that, you know, they're nervous, there's things like that. But I, you know, I, and I can say confidently that my rooms are a, a warm and welcoming experience for people. Because we need them to do their best work, don't we? We need that to do the best job. And it's that thing, it's like, because we're being judged by producers and directors about the people that we're bringing in, right? So we're, we're employed based on our ideas. So we're bringing actors in based on the fact that we know they are right for the role that they are potentially one of the, the people. So you're in the room because we have every confidence that you can do it. So we're willing you, I think everyone in the room is willing you to do well because we want to cast, you know, we want to cast the show. And also we want the, that jigsaw piece and the jigsaw. Um, so, yeah, and so I'm basically being, I know that I'm being judged, so I want to make the right choices and bring people in. So I want to, to every stage of that for the actor, for it to be easy for them, that it's an enjoyable experience. And also you just think, you know, of each time, every role I bring in 10 people for each role, or even less, there's always, or more, there's always going to be only one person that gets that job, that role. Yeah. Yeah. So you want people to have had a nice experience if, you know, because most of the time you're not going to get the role. And that's not because you're not right or you're not good enough. It's just the process. Yeah. Um, so therefore, you want that experience to be have been a nice one so it doesn't feel awful, you know. Definitely. What, and what is it that people, like actors, when they come in, that, that they do sometimes, and you're, you're just like, like, what are the, what are the don'ts? What, what is it when, when actors come in and, and you're, you know, you're, what don't you want them to do? <laughs> well, I think sometimes people think they have to come in in character. And actually, unless you're specifically asked to do that, then especially in TV and film, you don't want that what you want is to know who the person is apart, you know, separate to the role. Because like for a director and producer, you know, they're going to be working with this person for X amount of time. So they just want to get a sense of who that person is because it's all, it's that team, isn't it? When you're on set, it's all, it, it's a team. So it's just getting at, you know, are, am I moulding with you creatively as a person uh, or personally as a person, let alone your interpretation of the scene. So I think that's a key thing is just to be yourself. And the question I'm often asked is, what can I do to stand out? Yeah. And actually, you shouldn't be thinking like that at all because you're never going to second guess what the room is thinking or what they want. And often they might want something and then you bring something else and they go, oh, actually, that's really interesting. So Especially if you've brought someone in a lot and you know them, what you're bringing them in for is because they're them. And you don't want them to like second yeah. guess, right? Exactly. Um, so actually, the only thing you can do is just be yourself, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I I don't know because I've listened. There's a really good podcast called Honest Actors, um, done by Jonathan Harden. He just sort of interviews loads of actors of all different, you know, disciplines and status and whatever. Um, and it's always really interesting just to hear that that sort of side of things and there's a number of people that don't like the chat at the beginning. They just want to get on with the role. And I think that's something that I also have to think about is that sometimes yeah. people just, they're too wound up and they don't want to have to do small talk. They just want to get on with it. Um, and so, you know, some producers are amazing uh, or directors are great at small talk in that they make people feel at ease. Other times it is quite awkward. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I can understand why that can be quite frustrating when you sort of, geared yourself up to do some scenes and then you've got to do this like oh chit chat chit chat when i was an actor i remember going in for a couple of things where the director was terrible at small talk um i felt that it was almost like somebody told him to do it uh it was it was for for uh tv and he kind of and i just thought i, I think i i didn't say this but i think i almost said should, should we just should we start i kind of want, didn't want him to feel let him. well that's the other thing because awkward. directors or could also could be nervous in an audition room, you know, because they are 
creative beasts. And so sometimes directors are very visual and they're not necessarily, you know, like they're not good communicators. And so for them, it could be awkward as well, just as much. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? I love um, it. Yeah. Let's go to some questions. We've got Louise here. Uh, hi, Jane Jones. If you like someone's showreel, is that enough to call them in, ask for a self-tape, or do you look to see if they have significant TV and film credits as well? So for me, it's about your acting ability. I don't care what your, if you've got, you know, 50 credits that are on stage and no TV or loads of TV and whatever. I just, for me, it's about your ability, who you are in the room, what your ability is. So a show will is a really good indication of what you can do. Sometimes it just, there's something within the performance that makes me think that, you know, you might be right for the role that I'm casting. I'm someone who doesn't, I, I don't use self tapes extensively. Um, I am very much someone who likes to be in the room. So if you know time and budget is allows it, I will do generals in a room for you know people I haven't met before. Um, that's not to say I don't do self tapes. I do use them sometimes and then when it's needed. But I think you get so much more out of meeting someone in the room. So yeah, credits. I, in all honesty, I generally don't look at credits that much. Sometimes it might you might just to sort of see get a sense of what someone's done, um, but it's if if there's something in your performance that is good for the role, I'm going to bring you in, irrespective. It, of it's incredible how I think this is slowly getting across to people watching. There's been so many Q and As during lockdown with casting directors and so many things like that, uh, one to ones and so on that it's starting to get across that actually. The credits are important to a certain degree, but if you've got a reel and you you tick the box for the role and you're good, that's it. Because because at the end of the day, you've got to start somewhere, haven't you? you know, Absolutely. The, and also you know, for us, it's like, especially for me, I hate routine, right? So it makes it much more fun for me that I'm getting actors that I haven't met before, that I haven't been given an opportunity. It's so rewarding to do that. Um, so if you're only giving jobs to people who've got credits, all we're going to see is the same actors on screen. Yeah. I mean, which is, you know, I mean, it's enough already with the set. We always get the same, you know, names on screen, which is tiresome. Yeah. Um, and there's loads of actors out there who are more than capable, if not better, than some of those names. It's just that you know, execs obviously want the names to have in their shows. So no, I mean, and it doesn't even have to be a real. It can be just one scene. Um, you know, one clip, if you haven't got any screen clips, then, you know, there's lots of affordable showreel um, providers around who will do scenes for you, who are filmed by, you know, professional camera people. And, you know, it's, or you can, if you've got a scene that you've written yourself, you know, they're, they're good. Um, and I've seen a lot of those that are good quality that I, I will bring people in based on what they've done in that, you know, clip. Louise, Louise has got a great reel. There you are, Louise. There you are. Louise Willoughby. <laughs> Uh, fabulous. Uh, Christopher, good morning, James and Jane. Just a quick question about showreels. I know you should put one of your strongest scenes at the start, but do you have any personal preference on style of the scene? No. Every project is different. Every character is different. So it's a similar thing. You can never second guess what people are wanting. Um, so I think the key thing is just to put the, the scene that you think is the strongest, or pretend, you know, chat with your agent, chat with friends, see what you think is the strongest scene and put it first. Some casting directors only watch the first 30 seconds of a, of a showreel. So you want to have your mo most impact scene at the beginning, whatever that is, whether it's comedy, whether it's, you know, drama, whatever, it could be anything. Um, I personally just, I tend to skip through. So I'll watch the first, you know, like a few seconds and then I'll skip and try and see the different scenes if they've got any contrasting characters within the reel. Um, but I think generally none of us sort of sit and watch a whole showreel. In all honesty, we don't. So it's just if you have contrasting scenes, put them in, but always have your most impacted one at the beginning. And also that thing of who you're acting with. Remember, we want to see you, not the other person. So yeah, exactly. if you've got a scene, there's a lot of someone else in. Edit that down, or, yeah. or have you got enough elsewhere, right? And we make we can make up our mind really quickly within seconds. We'll just see something. There'll be something in the performance. That is like, yeah, actually, that's good for that role. And yeah, let's yeah. give that a go, you know. Um, you got Artie. Hey, James and Jane, thanks for doing this. 
Any limitations on moving away from London to Manchester? Would it put you off casting someone from Manchester over London if filming is in London, say, over weeks? Well, you see, this. Well, I'm a bit biased because I'm a Londoner who moved to Manchester. So, um, and I'm still working, and I still do jobs in London. So, uh, I think if you have a base somewhere, um, and you can, then it's fine where you live. It's going to be cheaper for you to live in Manchester. James and I were just having this conversation about living yeah. in the north. It's still cheaper to live in the north and travel south. Um, so, I, fundamentally, I think, what do you? Where do you want to be in life? Do you want to be living in Manchester? It's a, you know, do you want a nicer pace of life? If you want that, if it's going to make you happier, move there. Um, it wouldn't exclude, it wouldn't exclude you from jobs. And if anything, it will make you available for loads of other work that's filming in the north. Right. So I don't think you should think about it as a career move. I think you should think about it as a life move and then decide. Great advice, uh, Ailey. What do you look for in a good self tape? Uh, well, again, I don't use them that often, so it's not um, it's not a major key thing. For I suppose generally the things that are most irritating about self tapes is so when I send out my self tapes, people get a really detailed PDF about what we want in the scene, how we want if we if they need to you know position their eyeline a certain way, or um, how it needs to be shot, or which scenes, etc., etc., etc. With that, it's also the instructions of what we want. So in the sense of save the file with a certain name, your name, the character's name, the scene name, whatever it is. There's always really specific instructions because, um, you know, when you generally do self-tape, you'll bring, there is a number of them coming in. You might have a few projects on the go and therefore you've got multiple self-tapes for multiple jobs. So when those self-tapes come in, if they're being downloaded en masse, you want to be able to not have to watch the whole reel to find out who it is. You want the, the file to say, you know, Hayley Corney, um, Joe Blocks, whatever. Um, so follow the instructions that are given. And I know that sounds like it's completely common sense, but the amount of times, and I can be really quite <laughs> anal about detail, because I want it to be right so that it's right for them and it's then it's easier for us the other end and people still ignore it. I use Cast and Network self tape facility and because for them they've got obviously multiple cast and directors with accounts doing different projects and they don't know what we're self what we're doing. They literally get the self tapes and they have very specific information they need on the self tapes. Who's the cast and director? What's the project? What's the character? So that they can allocate it to the right account, and the amount of times people don't do that, they don't send it, and then you just, you know, then your stuff's not going to get seen. And also, fuck, make sure you get it in by the deadline. Again, you think that's common sense? People don't. Yeah, there's a deadline for a reason. You know, we got to watch them and then send them to production. So, yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's just you know, in the actual self tape itself. Make sure you're somewhere where there's not loads of noise. Natural light from a window is great. You know, you don't have to have a big studio set up. Just quiet, well lit. Um, you can have a camera, you know, like a, even your phone on a little, you know, three pound tripod. Um, just so that we can see your face, we can hear you. We're not distracted by things, you know, or, you know, you've got your family holiday pictures on the wall. Um, there was once someone did it years ago and he sort of did it in his with his cupboard in his pants. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think he wanted to be remembered. Um, but then you remember for the wrong reasons. That was very early days of self tapes, so we'll forgive him. Uh, Haley, if you go back three weeks, uh, we had Manuel Puro on, who was doing a self tape seminar. So go and find that tape, and he gives you all the tips in there as well. And There's that will be going on this week. I was going to say, there's also on Spotlight, they've got uh, all the things you needed to know about. And one of those is self-tapes. And there's like uh, headshots. It's on their YouTube channel. They're really, really useful. And they basically interviewed multiple cast and directors. And we all give our little, you know, um, opinions on those things. So, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Patricia, I just... Uh, hi, uh, James and Jane. I'm asking this uh, if a lot of industry people, so, uh, with a lot of it, okay. So I'm interested in your predictions on how the business might move forward in the light of COVID and reduction of the two-metre rule. 
Hmm. I think the thing is, is, you know, you know as much as I know, uh, and that is that no one knows. <laughs> I mean, we just don't know, do we? I was on a job, um, it was a kid's series, so because I'd done this huge uh, search for the, the leads, I had this mass of kids that I could audition online while we were in lockdown. And so we did lots of Skype auditions. And then it, the longer lockdown went on, we were re- it just became really sort of, you know, we're not going to be able to film in some holidays. We can't film in September because these kids haven't been in school. So we can't sort of take them away from their first term back at school. So that's been put on hold until next year. Because um, realistically, you know, it has to be safe, right, for the kids, for the cast, yeah. for the crew. Um, so I think everyone is just on pause. We just have to literally week to week, we've got to work it out. I mean, I have a, a job that I was offered just before lockdown. Um, and then when I'm, you know, they didn't confirm me because of lockdown, they sort of come back to say they're hoping to start the casting in, you know, a few months. But again, you know, that's not definitive, is it? Because we just don't know. We might get another second wave. I think also the part part of that is, is that often um, casts and crew, uh, same in theatre, they're international now. So it's not even about just what's happening here. It's what's happening in other countries. Like maybe you're supposed to be filming in Croatia or how's that going to work? Or maybe it's a, a crew from Spain that are coming out. It's all of that. It's so complex. Yeah. Um, I think it's a day-by-day situation, really. It really is. I mean, it just... We just don't know, do we? And some, who was it? Someone was saying, someone was saying yesterday about a job happening in Spain. Um, I can't remember who it was. Anyway, but um, you know, there, are things, there are things happening, yeah. But even if they start, the insurance situation is going to be crazy, aren't they? Because it's like, yeah. how are they going to insure against another pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I think if anything, we've got more, there's more likelihood of screen happening than theatre. I think theatre yeah. is going to be really, really difficult. Yeah. And I think, I think really it's, it's that we've been saying this a lot and the people we've had on to do mindfulness and, and um, mental health seminars aren't here. They've just said, you just got to take each day Take, make sure you're taking time. Don't feel like you've got to be working on yourself every day, but working on yourself is a really great way of, of kind of keeping your mind in a positive place. That's why this started up. It's about that. It's about having access to stuff and to keep your mind. But, you know, even us on our side of it, we can't even think until December or or, 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 or October, November, because we just don't know. And, and if I guess if, if for us, if we were really thinking about, is it going to happen in December? Is it going to happen in January? We would just get so stressed, so full of anxiety about something that we don't can't control and don't know about. So I think it's just that it really is kind and of I think there is some sort of, I don't know, it just, in a way it helps that everyone doesn't know. <laughs> it's not like yeah. we're like left, left out. Literally no one knows. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's not like somebody's holding something back from us. Yeah. And I think, you know, the UK has been hit really hard and we, you know, it hasn't been dealt with very well compared to some of the other countries. You know, other countries are sort of going back to normal. I've got friends in Norway and they're in restaurants in May, um, which was, oh, God, come on. <laughs> Who's to know? Who is to know? No one knows. Uh, Colby, morning to you both. Do you have any tips on how to bridge the gap from landing musical theatre auditions to landing TV and film auditions? Um, I think key for that is having a, if you haven't got screen um, credits, then just having a show real scene on your CV. That is um, very much, you know, the, the screen acting which is underplayed and, you know, um, because that will just show people that ability is there. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And, and you know, it's the same. The other way. It's the same the other way. To, uh, uh, TV actors of, of, that have done musical, and they want to get into that, and, and they've got nothing on the CV. We say the same thing. Listen, you just need to record yourself singing something, so we can yeah. hear it. You yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. So just work. Yeah, work. I think that's actually quite an easy one actually to make that again. And it's like if we're not. Like I said earlier on, we're not necessarily looking at your credits. And actually, if you, you've got loads of musical theatre, but you've got this great clip on, on your CV that's like, great, you know, fab. 
Um, just if you're joining us, uh, please, there's a live comments box. So if you are subscribing to our channel, you can write questions and we'll go through those. Um, if you do write question, we may have already answered it uh, if you've just arrived. So you can go and watch this from the start or uh, afterwards and catch up on, on those kind of things. Um, Hayley again, uh, are you doing any generals via Zoom at the moment? Uh, well, I've done some, I don't necessarily do generals. I mean, I have been working up for like the last little month, so I've been busy doing that. But um, I have done some of the spotlight one-to-ones. Um, I, yeah, I haven't done loads, and that's just time more than anything. Um, so yeah, if you see if if you if you see them, it'll, it's going to be on spotlight. I'll be on part of the spotlight. Lot. Brilliant. Uh, to Matt, hi James and Jane. I hope you're both well. Thank you. Uh, regarding showreels, what are your thoughts on including self-shot scenes monologues? So, um, I'm personally, I'm not a fan of monologues um, on screen, but that's me. <laughs> if you are going to do them, uh, I think it's good to have, you know, like on Spotlight, where you can have your separate clips within your showreel. You can have like a commercial reel, you can have, you know, musical theatre reel, or you can have, you know, drama, whatever, action reel. I would put the monologue as a separate clip. Um, so people know, the people that like watching monologues can engage with it. Um, Self-shot scenes, if they're good, and you're reacting to someone, I think it's really key that you're reacting to someone. Um, why not? Yeah. Yeah, don't... Uh, I don't put monologues in your show reel. It's not. That's that's not. not yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, Artie, again, any things you've noticed that actors have done to make their performance more interesting to other actors? Example, I've heard being bold, finding an arc if it's true to the character is good. So. Is that, I guess, in auditions, you know, is there something, you know... I mean, that you... again, it's that thing, there is never one thing. There is never one thing. And, you you know, I, I could, the ten actors I bring in for one character could all perform completely differently. And there is never going to be something that they do that is different that I could give advice on. It's what happens in the room. It's how people feed off the notes they're given. I think the key thing, again, it's that thing, is don't try and second guess what people want. Go in with your interpretation of the scene. Allow your performance to change with the notes that are given. Um, you know, all, always, always be prepared to turn it on its head um, because that's part of the process, isn't it? The director wants to know that you're going to listen to the notes they're giving you. Even if you performed it exactly how they want it, they sometimes they just want to see what you do when you when they give you a note. Or they themselves are thinking, oh, actually, what if, you know, they start sort of rehearsing ideas yeah. with an actor so you know actors might think that they by doing fine being bold and finding an art you know whatever it's given got them the job i don't there is no there is never one reason why someone gets a job everyone can make that choice but there's only ever going to be one person that gets it and i think fundamentally you know there's always good you know when you look at scenes you've got to see the shift within the scene don't you know it's just don't have it perform it in one way you know when we talk we we have different paces of talking we have different emotions when we say things it's finding it's finding those points within the scene that enhances your performance is always going to help it's not you know it's not a fundamentally going to get you the job but it's going to make you a better performer um but yeah i think that that's great great a bit of advice and it's something again that's spoken about a lot is obviously work really hard prepare really well but then you've got to the skill is that flexibility when either you or the director gives gives those notes that you can go okay I'm letting go of all of that now I'm, I'm now and that's a positive thing isn't it when yeah. when you give a note to an actor it's actually a positive thing it's like you're definitely. wanting to engage with them definitely um, something have you ever and this has happened to us a few times and it's so exciting when an actor comes into the room so it's kind of a two-parter an actor comes into the room and either changes the whole mind of what that character was going to be like yeah. and, to, uh, and then secondly that wild card that you saw maybe at monologue slam because I know you're involved with those a lot uh, or on a tape that you just kind of go I'll give them that chance and they come in and just steal it 
My so, wild cards are people I've not I've not seen reels of, so they're really wild wild cards. If yeah, I've seen them yeah. in monologue slam or I've seen a clip, I know they're good. Right. Uh, but yeah, sorry, go on, Karen. What no, that, so, so tell us about that. Have you had that experience where someone just literally <laughs> comes in and turns the role around? It's like yeah. That's and it, yeah, and I think, and that's the thing, isn't it? It's like, like I was saying, sort of, I sort of said earlier on, if someone's got an idea, like the director's got, a, they're in their head, they they have an idea of what the character is and what they want from the scene, and then someone comes in and totally changes it, and it just go, and they're oh wow, and then they work with that, and then then they start rehearsing that sort of take on the role. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's all, and it also it just it makes our day more interesting, doesn't it? Because you've got a different interpretation of the scene. Um, it's again it's it's rewarding if there's someone comes in and just blows everyone's socks off because they've done something so unique and again you can never know what that is <laughs> there is no way of me telling you what the formula is no um yeah and then you just it's just i know you get a buzz out of it it's great yeah i love it brilliant especially if they then get the job then you're like yes yes i, mean, uh, I have passed so many people from seeing them in monologue Plan. yeah well it's fantastic it's absolutely brilliant you know, it's, we, i mean uh, if, once we get back to normality ah. go and do do get it go and audition for monologue exam it's amazing and the whole industry industry is there they support it you know you're seen you get jobs you're brought in for auditions it's amazing i love it yeah it's awesome uh bill as a disabled actor how much do you feel um you have for casting people with a disability in roles where the main thrust of the character isn't their disability no i know because i went to one of the um the dank uh sessions 18 months ago maybe and that was brought up then um and it's definitely you know and i admitted at the time often i will bring in people when they, you know, when you know there's a disability, then you bring them in for a dis disabled character. And since that, I went to Dank, I was like, actually, no, I'm going to bring people based on, you know, whatever the character is. Um, so, yes, no. So I think there is, I think the mindset is definitely changing. Um, it's not about this is the disabled role, you know, so therefore it's more about this is a character and we'll bring in actors um, who are right for the role, whatever, you know whatever background that is. Um, so I think it is definitely changing, Bill, definitely. Yeah, we had that with, um, with we're talking to uh, Kate O'Donnell. Do you know Kate O'Donnell? She does um, Trans Vegas in Manchester, it was supposed to be, and she's uh, about supportive in, in the trans community. And it was a conversation that we had um, with her about, okay, you bring someone in trans for the trans role because it's important yeah. to represent but then we always ask the question well, okay but what about all the other roles they they can yeah. transfer right because yeah, yeah. they're just actors and it's that. All human beings. exactly yeah. yeah so if you're right for the role you're right for the role i mean i've just started watching on netflix um po the politician which is hilarious um oh. and there's one of the characters in there who is trans male female to male but is playing a male role right and there is just and that's it and you go great. Yep. That's what it is. There's no mention about anything. It's just he's James. There you are. That's it. Um, <laughs> Mara, I mean, it literally is, and I love that this is, you know, getting, you know, these changes are coming, and it's it's fun. I think. Uh, what is the best way of getting on your radar? I'm looking to be more proactive while working with my agent, of course. I think, you know, at the moment, you've got to also be mindful that we're all in lockdown and we've all got things going on that have got nothing to do with work. So I think, yes, you obviously want to, you know, make contact with people, but also don't sort of be appreciative of that not everyone is necessarily in work mode for various different reasons. Um, I think fundamentally, I've got a page on my website that is really detailed about how the best thing, you know, for, to, to how to contact me um so which is you know send an email with a link to your cv and your showreel and when i have time i'll watch it i don't need to know your life story i don't need to know how dedicated you are as an actor i assume all actors are dedicated um i just think you know it we, basically we we just generally we absorb we absorb information about actors and then they're all in this huge database in our brains or on our spotlight <laughs> um, accounts that we will then dip into when we need them um 
so yeah, I mean, you know, send me your reel and your, and your CV and then if the role comes up that's right for you, it's right for you. Or, you know, get involved with Monologue Slam. And then <laughs> I think it's really important to make that, to highlight that point that, um, that you know, cast and directors are going through their own mental health issues, their own anxieties. They may have family yeah. that are going through it. It's just like, you know, yeah. And and it's really important that 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 actors just give everyone a little break on, on this. We want that communication, but at the same time, it's 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 a different time. And and people yeah. are, you know, we were casting something recently, and I said it was very slow for the agents and people to get back. They're furloughed and whatnot, and the actors. Yeah. And I yeah. said to the director, I think that it could be, you know, we we don't know. I can't push because we don't know if the actors are, are going through it. And it happened to be that one of them's father was very sick with COVID and that's why they weren't coming back. And so it's we need a little bit of space and a bit of love and a bit of give, I think. Yeah. Um, how important is social media? Ed, um, it's so one of my Ara chickens. Hi, <laughs> 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 No, I know some actors spend a lot of time striking up conversations with CDs on Twitter or posting on Insta. Uh, are they more likely to get auditions? No. Um, so, uh, well, it depends on the casting director. Some casting directors use social media for those things. I don't. I think fundamentally, do your research. Um, you know, I, I specifically say on my Twitter and my Instagram that. I don't. If you if you want to send me your CV or your show, up, send it by email. I don't want it on on Twitter. I don't want it on Instagram. Um, fundamentally, again, it's that thing. If you send me your show, up, I'm going to watch it when I've got time. So if you send it as an email, it gets put in a folder. Yeah. And it gets filed away, and then I can access it really easily. If you do it on Twitter, and if you like put loads of handles in your message, which is my oh. absolute. Yeah you get these multiple reply alls. And so if you haven't been on Twitter all day because you've been auditioning or whatever, or you're just having a day off, and you go on your notification, I don't always read all of my notifications. So if you put your showreel on and there's loads of other handles on it, and then you've got 50,000 people replying and responding to it, all I'm getting is that on my notification feed. I'm not getting your showreel. And then when I want to go back to watch it, if, I want, you know, if I've got the time, I'm not going to find it on Twitter. It's not going to happen. I'm on, when I'm onto it, I go on for like a couple of minutes. You might post something, you might have a little scroll, and then you're off. Same with Instagram. Instagram for me is about imagery. It's not about, you know. So I don't, personally, I don't use social media as a, as a, as a way of, um, of, you know, finding actors. Um, if I can't get hold of you, if you haven't got an agent, I need to get hold of you quickly. Obviously, it's a good way to quickly message someone. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Do your research. If people say, please don't send me your show reel on my on Instagram or Twitter, which a lot of custom directors do, don't send them your show reel. Don't send them invites. Again, it's a similar thing. We're not going. We're going to forget about it. It's gone. Or we might not see it on our notifications. Well, I think um, that's what you say, there's nothing we can do with it. If you get it through LinkedIn or Twitter or Instagram, or whatever, all these messages, I can't. I can't save it. I can't do anything with it. That's like, you know, I just. So I just, yeah. And I think they just do something for me, the process of seeing an email, it lodges in my brain more than a, a message on, on social media. Yeah. And then you, you do it and they go, oh, God, I haven't replied to that email. I had this the other day on a QA and a where someone wants to sort of work, move into casting and I'd seen the email and um, I just, you know, I, I was thinking, oh, I must respond to that. And then I hadn't got around to doing it. And then she came on the Q&A and asked the question. I was like, I remember you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah. I said, we do see the messages. I just can't remember. If that had happened on Twitter, it probably just wouldn't have, it wouldn't have, it would have been a different process. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So to, to finalise that, only communicate if the cast director has asked you to yeah. on social media. Other than that, send a nice email. And there are some, there are some cast directors and agents who love that on, on social media. It is, and that's great. And that's their way of working. But we are all... We're not robots. We all have our ways of working. So if you can research what people want, and then otherwise you're just going to piss us off. <laughs> Great advice. Don't. <laughs> uh, Ruby's vlogs. What are your thoughts on social media? Actors putting their work out there, hopefully to be seen and noted. It's a thing, isn't it? It's that uh, um, if you're doing it, do it so people can actively engage with it. So similar, you know, don't start sending it to people if they don't want it. 
Yeah. I mean, I if it's like you doing it, it your irritates me. I, I find it just irritates me people doing it when I'm on. And sometimes you're, you know, you're in the evening or it's first thing in the morning. You don't want to be doing work stuff. You no, know, no. Scroll through and see a funny video or get, you know, political or whatever. I yeah. don't want to, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, if it works, it works. But don't think that everyone's going to engage with it. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I think that also, like, you know, put it on Insta, put it on whatever, but don't do it in, in with with that idea that every, right. everyone can yeah. respond to you. And also there is that thing, you know, if people hassle you too much on social media, and I say hassle, I mean just communicate too, too much, it becomes a bind. You know, we're not – it's we, – we're human beings, things that will irritate us, and, you know, it's just don't think by being persistent on social media or even on email it's going to – get your job because it's not <laughs> absolutely to be honest you know it's like, yeah but it's like you said, we read everything everything gets filed away it's just if we if it's not if you're not right for the project working on it at the time then it, we've got to put that aside because we have deadlines right and we have all of that kind of stuff yeah 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 uh, Becky, hi, Bo. If, if I wanted to send an introductory email to a CD, would I have to ask my agent first? Also, do you prefer a short introductory email, spotlight, and showreel? Um, you, I wouldn't. Don't you don't need to ask your agent. I think you tell them that you're doing it absolutely, so they're, they're aware. But uh, no, I mean, I, I expect uh, actors to email me. I, it's the norm for me. I think it's you know, don't think you can't. Um, so similarly to what I said earlier on, on my. Uh, website i've got a very detailed page on as to how is the best way to communicate and i think you know just a little a really short introduction i don't need my i don't need my ego buttered up i don't care what shows you've seen that i've done because i know also that specifically a lot of my shows have been for kids so you know if you're saying you've seen these shows and you've got you've never seen them it's like <laughs> um you know so i don't need to be buttered up i don't need you to know my work. I know that I'm a craftsman director, you're an actor, and obviously you want to get be seen, which is absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, link to Spotlight, absolutely. Um, show real on Spotlight, absolutely. Um, good headshots that represent you. It's nice to have an image actually on your website, just one headshot on your website, sorry, on the email, just to have one little headshot. Just a, little, a little one. A little just a little one. I don't need a big one that takes no. my, yeah, my whole email, just like a little headshot. Um, because what we, as, as casting directors, we work with, it's, a, it's the connecting the visual with the words. So we connect your headshot with your name. So on your email, if you just have your name and a link to your CV, which is fine, um, but if you have your name and your headshot, then it logs it logs in. Excellent. Um, so one about headshots. Hi both. How important is it that you look like your headshot? Yeah. And can your opinion change in the room? Over lockdown, my hair is grown. I don't have the money to get new ones done. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a tricky thing, isn't it, with headshots because they are expensive. Uh, I think if your hair's grown, you you know your agent can just say can give you the heads up. They can give us a heads up before, you know, their hair's longer than it is in the headshot. If you haven't got the money to, you know, to get them. It is important that you look like your headshots. I think with long, if your hair's got longer, it's it's not, I mean, that happens, doesn't it? Uh, I think if you had shaved all your hair off and your all your headshots and really long hair um, with a beard and now your head, you're shaved without a beard, I think that would be quite a contrast. But I think if your hair's just growing because of lockdown, it's, fine um i think the key thing is just it needs to be the best representation of you and that is more about um you your you know one of the better world your soul your who you are your eyes you know your expressions um and if you do have different looks obviously you know if even if you've got maybe a friend who's a, who takes a good photo um try and get maybe one out within your portfolio that it's you with the longer hair um or even you know you can just take a shot so that you're when you know the agent calls up and says look the headshots they um the hair's growing in the lockdown but here's a shot of what it looks like they look like now yeah. um that's handy I, i've definitely had that before when someone had a drastic haircut different to the headshot and they sent me the phone i was like well great fine this makes no difference to the character so yeah at least we get an idea you know 
I think it might be different for commercials. I think for TV and film, it's like different. Unless, of course, they wanted someone with really long hair and you've shaved it off. You know, whatever. <laughs> and the thing is, like, if you've shaved all your hair off, the, the time it takes to grow that back and all that kind of stuff, if it's a short thing. But I think, like you say, just, just take a picture and just tell your agent. Just let your agents yeah. know, isn't it? Like, yeah. so many times the actors just don't tell their agents that they're yeah. doing things. Yeah. Let them know. Because no, you know, the agent is, they're the one who, they're the ones who are going to, push you they're the ones we're gonna have the cop they, they're the ones we have the dialogue with and if you don't have an agent and i've you know i've got you th straight from spotlight then again just flag it up my hair is different here's a quick image so you know and then it's like okay fine you know yeah brilliant christopher is asking about spotlight. what are your thoughts on sites other than spotlight i'm signed up to mandy mandy voice backstage as well as spotlight and i'm going broke trying to yeah put myself out there absolutely do you use them all well i mean fundamentally no i don't um because similarly to you it's that thing of you know if i'm putting a breakdown out i don't want to have to put it out on five or six different platforms it's it takes time um, I use Spotlight and I use Casting Networks. Um, Spotlight, everyone uses Spotlight, everyone. So fundamentally, and I know it can be expensive, and I, I believe they've changed the payment scheme so you don't have to do it all at once. You can sort of do it every month, do a direct debit, I think. Um, but Spotlight is the vital one to be on. All the others are in addition. I don't use Mandy, I don't use Mandy voice, I don't do voice casting, and I don't use backstage. Um, so casting networks I use because I use their audition programme, which is really good for me, and I use their self-tape um, facility. So I put my breakdowns out on there as well. But when I put those breakdowns out, I specifically say, please do not re resubmit people you've already submitted on Spotlight. And it's just for people that might only have, especially with kids, I think a lot of them, you know, they, you know, so it's, if they're only on cast networks, then I get the um, suggestions from there. But basically, the spotlight is the main. Everyone uses it. Brilliant. Um, uh, it's interesting. Fabrizio, um, I'm thinking of ending my showreel with a short 10 second clip of me kissing my on screen husband. Oh. Uh, it's filmed really well, though you perceive it to be redundant. Would you receive it? Um, I don't need to see someone kiss and to know they can act. Fun, yeah, I do. Yeah, I mean, unless there's a sort of lead up to it that's a really good scene, uh, someone's kissing ability is not going to get in the job. No, How, however fabulous it might be, um, <laughs> I'm not, it's not going to get you a job. So, yeah, yeah, so if you had a lead up to that, it was a really nice emotive scene, absolutely, but it's, it's irrelevant to a, a person's performance. Um, <laughs> answer, <laughs> hi James and Jane. I hope you're both well. Thanks for the session. Do you prefer actors to be off book for a casting with you? Um, if if I do want people off book, then I always let them know. I think the the key thing is to be as familiar as you possibly can. I absolutely fine with people having the paper as long as it's not distracting from their performance. Um, if you've got the page in front of you for reference totally fine i've worked with uh i was one director i worked with and she didn't like people being off book because it, she felt they were too rehearsed and for her an audition is so far down the process to when you're filming that she doesn't want them to be locked in so she preferred them to be familiar but not having learned. i mean some people have to because they're dyslexic they need to have learned before they come in the room um so but again i'm someone who gives you lots of time anyway to prep, I know some, I've heard some people getting like scripts the night before and they have to be in the next morning, which I think is horrendous. Um, so yeah, I think the key thing, if you're asked to be off book, then obviously be off book. If if you realistically, if you've got enough time to be off book, um, and then if not, just be familiar with it and have it for reference. You know, it's, it's be prepared, you know, before you come in the room, just be prepared as, as well as you can. Um, that thing of again, like we we're talking right at the start about being able to work with you or the director, and if you, yeah, yeah so it, the, you know, you don't if you're not off book, that's okay, but you've got to be able to like work it, haven't you? You know, yeah. you can't you know, work the piece, and that, again, yeah. that's the important thing. So you don't have to be spot. And sometimes, you know, you, you're with directors or producers, you just say, don't worry about the words, just say whatever you want to say, yeah. whatever feels right. You know what the, the little, you know, you know the intent of what they're saying. Just let it, you know, and we can always prompt you. 
Um, so yeah, I think I know. I know some people would want people off, but, but I think I for a recall, yes. But for general first audition, no. For a, show, a self tape, yes. Bizarrely, it doesn't work if you've got the page in front of you. Um, but yeah, no. I, for me, no, it's not that important. But you will be told if you need to be off book. I think, like you just said, if if you are in an audition and, and uh, you know, especially like for musicals as well, because I know that you do musicals, we've seen you in the past. If you get a lyric wrong, honestly, uh, uh, we've seen people melt that they've got this one lyric wrong. We probably haven't even heard it, you know. It's just so not important. And also, um, it's that thing, isn't it? Because you just go, well, sometimes mistakes happen, but that's fine because it's the it's the overall thing, isn't it? And it is, and you, you see that so often when people get so upset because they've yeah. got a line wrong, and you go, honestly, it's really fine. And then it takes, then they get so stuck on this thing that they, you know got wrong that they then lose they lose their performance because they're so upset with themselves and actually you should just let it go yeah. um and it is that thing it, even though we say look it doesn't matter if you forget the lines it's still it's been so entrenched in their brain that they have to be get everything right and i don't know where that's coming from but so many whether it's the agents whether it's the drama teachers you must learn your lines that there's this real pressure on people but then, and it's a shame because then, you know, people that make a mistake and then just carry on, it's great because it's just, they're not affecting their performance. So, yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully other casting directors are informed, just as informative of me and they'll tell you what they want in the room, you know, so, yeah. There you go, simple as that. <laughs> and have another question here as well. What's your view on that? personal website i.e showcasing their work do you ever search for actors that way or is it spotlight enough spotlight enough i i don't ever look at fundamentally i very rarely look at someone's website the only time i might is if they haven't got a reel on spotlight and i just want to see if they've got a reel on their website um i mean if you have a reel just don't have it on your website and not have it on spotlight have it on spotlight i think websites for actors for me are completely redundant I think it's um, I think it's one of the things that people like to do, and they put them together, which is great. Um, you know, I know it's a big thing in America. They have websites. A lot of them in America, so it's become a, a very kind of big thing. It's part of the professional package. But I think the key is, and it's, it, it comes to if you can't afford to do a website and put a website, it's not a necessity. If it's something you want to do because you like it and it's part of your professional, then great. But this all it's I not think it's not work necessarily. I mean, there are affordable websites out there that sort of do it really, you know, for yeah. you, like on Weebly or whatever, you know, and they look nice. But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, for me personally, no, I don't, I don't, it's very rare that I look at them. Just, we've only got a few minutes. I'm just going to uh, look through. I know it goes so quickly, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> I hear, here's a good one. Uh, Indira, great name. Hi, James and Jane. Thanks for this session. What your what are your thoughts on using props during audition process? Uh, again, as long as it's not because it's, you know, I, certainly people have had it. You know, they come in and they use their phone as a prop, or they've come in with like your coffee mug or whatever because it's fine. But don't make it the the, the thing about your performance. Um, if it helps you do the the scene with it, great. Um, but if the prop becomes your performance, then it's taken away from your performance, if that makes sense. Again, um, it comes that you might give direction and go, oh, actually, can you just lose that prop? Right. And then you haven't done it any other way. Yeah, yeah. no, so I think, um, yeah, no, I'm fine with people using props, it's fine, it doesn't bother me. Awesome, that's fantastic. I think that's all we have time for with the question. Oh, it's so um, quick. It's like, that was really quick. We could have gone on for hours, absolutely. <laughs> Well, we'll have to have you back. That's the key. Yeah, follow up. Uh, I want you to explain what the CDG is after your name. Can you just explain to me what uh, that is? Casting, casting Directors Guild. I'm a member of the Casting Directors Guild, which basically to get on it, you have to have a certain body of work behind you, um, a certain amount of years um, working, and then you have to be put forward by three other full-time members of the board. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't fit the criteria then you don't get on it. You might can reapply, obviously. There's people I know that people have reapplied and got them second time round, but yeah. Excellent. Saying, you know, 
you're, you're good. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. Um, I'm sure all the thanks will come in here. It's been, thank you so much for your time. And we will, we'll have to get you back uh, in a couple of months and talk yeah. more. Hopefully when the industry is moving and we've had a few shows go up. My thing is, and I hope you're not going to get cut off because it's like, no, 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 I can, but, I can tell um, that. My hope is that, you know, on TV and film, they're like, we've got to make so much so that we have a backlog of shows yeah, yeah. for the next pandemic. So that actually when we come, this is me being really positive. So when we come out of it, we're all going to be really effing busy because they're going to have to film so many things. Yes, I That'd love that. Nice, isn't it? I love that. I'll go with that one. Let's take that one forward. Jane, thank you so much. I'm going to thank take you. you out of this room, but don't go anywhere. I'll be with you in a minute. It's really special to have you here. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your time. See ya. Uh, that was Jane Anderson, how wonderful is that? We need to put this in a few hours. So thank you for all your questions. I'm sorry if you didn't get to more. Uh, if you did come slightly later, it may be that you want to your questions because you're beginning. Um, but if you remember, all the questions that you have are live. Uh, so if you want to get to your questions, you can do it. Please remember, all of these questions are live streams. So you can get to your questions. So you can get to your questions. So you can get to your questions. So you can get to Longer and get to get to the future. The two, the world, you have to be the more about it. Still today, the service that is being implemented, you have to be the more about it. Literally, please, because it's there for you to use. You have five and a half minutes left. Hopefully, we can uh, get that in the future. It's the fastest part of the story has been. And um, it's really good it for you. Thank you once again for going. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for your time. And uh, we will see you all again very soon. Um, coming up next, we have uh, the awesome Melody Sinclair, who's going to be doing hip hop commercial class. So uh, start warming up. Uh, all the details are on the website. So we'll see you again very soon.